Welcome back to P3. Today we're looking at unit 3.2, graphs of sec x, cosec x and cot x. So just as a reminder, um, sec x is our 1 over cos x, cosec x 1 over sin x, cot x 1 over tan x. Now to draw these graphs you don't really need to necessarily learn the new ones you just have to understand what's happening to the original graphs and that will enable you to draw the new ones. So essentially if we look at the cos graph being a 1 over uh, sorry, the sec x graph being a 1 over cos x graph, if I know how the cos x graph looks, I can quite quickly and easily work out how the sec x graph looks. Now I'm going to do this for cosec. Um, and what I've done is I've already drawn sin x ready. So here we have my graph of y equals sin x. And we want to draw y equals cosec x. So I know this is 1 over sin x. Okay, so there's a few key points that I need to be aware of. Firstly, where sin x equals 0, as in at 180 degrees, 1 divided by 0 I can't do. Okay, so what that means is at that point there is going to be no solutions that exist, so it's going to be an asymptote. So I can put that in ready straight away. There is where I'm going to have an asymptote. And this will be the case everywhere that sin x equals 0, because I cannot do 1 divided by 0. Okay, and so on. And obviously this graph does go on forever in kind of each direction. Now, next thing I need to look at is what's happening at each point and as we head towards what is now my asymptotes. So at 90 degrees, if I look up here, this is 1. And 1 divided by 1 is still 1. Now, as I go down towards this zero, I'm dividing by a number that is between zero and one. So for example, when I'm down dividing by half, I get two. And when I'm dividing by numbers smaller than that, like a, a fifth, an eighth, a tenth, and so on, or other smaller fractions, those numbers are gonna, one over that fraction is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. So what's happening is as I head towards 0, towards that 180, my graph is heading towards infinity. And the same will happen on both sides, heads towards infinity. Okay, um, and obviously it can't ever get there. Again, looking at the lower end, if I look at 270 degrees, this point it's going to be touching there because this is going to be equal to minus 1. 1 divided by minus 1 is still minus 1. And again, as I divide by a number between 0 and negative 1, I get start to get larger and larger negative values. So that's going to head towards infinity as I get closer to those asymptotes. And that there is the gist of what you're doing. Okay, for this one, cosec x graph, um, the sec x graph will be the same as this, just translated by 90 degrees. So here's the a better version of that cosec graph, just the, between minus 360 and plus 360. And what you can see is asymptotes appear everywhere that sine x equals zero, okay? And that's where it helps me draw my uh, graph. 
So, you know, that's where I'm left with. There's nothing wrong within the exam sketching in faint the sine x graph for this one and then drawing your cosec x with it. Now you can see the sec x graph is the same as the cosec graph, just translated. And of course the asymptotes are everywhere that cos x was equal to zero. Okay? I've also put in black here what it is in radians. Now the tan x essentially looks like a reflection in a way and a translation okay so if you think about what happened on the original tan graph uh, if i do a, a very quick sketch here an original tan graph would look something like if i do the one at the start here it looks like this in green yeah where then is between this minus 90 and 90 and that would be where my asymptotes would be okay now I'm just gonna get rid of this in a second but what we've got here is as this is very large okay one over a very large number is very small yeah with the negative ones very large negative very small. As I go towards a very small number, one over a very small negative number, it's going to be a very large negative number. Think of fractions here. Okay, where I hit my zero, one over a zero is impossible, hence asymptote. Here, where I would have had an asymptote, that is then where my zero is. So think of the reverse happening to this point. Okay, and that's how you kind of draw your graph. So just think of where the original is. One over a large number is small. One over a very small number is large. And when I'm talking about very small numbers, I am talking about numbers between um, one and zero or zero and negative one. just getting rid of that so you can see the original graph again okay okay so here we just want to do a quick sketch it's between minus 180 and plus 180 so if you think back to your graph got something like this I'm just going to do a sketch rough sketch and of course I've got an asymptote at minus 180 and an asymptote at 180 and there we have it okay now we've got a y equals negative x graph so that's going to then give me something like this so it's going to cross in two places okay so when you think of it y equals cot x and y equals negative x putting these together you've got cot x equals negative x so cot x plus x equals zero which is what we were looking at so all we're doing is looking at where these two graphs intersect so two solutions now with this one i just did a very faint line at one so here's a sketch of three plus five cosec x i've done for you here and uh, remember five cosec x means there's a stretch 
by multiplying the y values by five first. So where it would cross, where that minimum point, if I look at this point here, would have been at one times by five takes it to five, and then add three takes it to eight. This one at minus one times by five is minus five, add three takes it to minus two. So that's where I get these points for here. Now, I need to deduce the range of values for which 3 plus 5 cosec x equals k has no solutions. So there's going to be no solutions for everything underneath this line and above this line. Okay, so when I'm looking at it, it's going to have no solutions when I'm looking at less than y equal in 8. So that this line is y equals 8 so less than that but I also want greater than negative 2 so my y is going to be greater than negative 2 but less than 8 now since we're looking at k my final answer should be k not y okay so that's just making sure it's finished off properly if you found the video useful, please like and subscribe. Um, feel free to leave some comments on anything you want to see. And don't forget, new videos drop in daily.